New scientific discoveries offer more evidence that for tens of thousands of years, modern-looking humans shared the Earth with our evolutionary cousins. And whenever the groups met, whether in Africa or Eurasia or Australia, they did what came naturally. They made babies. In fact, hominid relations seems to have occurred wherever humans met others who looked like them, a controversial idea until recently. For example, Denisovan and Neanderthal DNA was present in ancient people living in South America and Papua New Guinea, but scientists know nothing about how this DNA got there. Indeed, the story of human evolution has gotten much more interesting with the discovery of interwoven genes of long-gone hominin species. Based on present evidence, the extinct species or subspecies of archaic human, known as the Denisovans, or Denisova hominins, lived from around 500,000 to as recently as 15,000 years ago and ranged all over Asia during the Lower and Middle Paleolithic. The name Denisovan comes from the name of a hermit named Denisov, who lived in a Siberian cave, much the same as the name Neanderthal comes from a hermit named Neander, who lived in a valley in Germany. Nonetheless, these northern hominins were not limited to the cold northern hemisphere. Their genes are also found in the tropics of the southern hemisphere. These barrel-chested humans whose thick double brows, broad noses and flat faces set them apart from modern humans, which made them even more Neanderthal than the Neanderthals. But far from being a single group, a new study of Denisovan legacy in individuals from New Guinea now suggests that these enigmatic humans were so varied that their populations were as distantly related to each other as Neanderthals were to Homo sapiens. In fact, we don't have any idea of the morphology of the Papuan Denisovan group, but given that this group lived in a tropical environment, they may have been more gracile looking, like Homo sapiens. The Denisovans are revealed by genetics to have split some 400,000 to 500,000 years ago from Neanderthals. From the Siberian cave, the first Denisovan DNA found comes from a single population, which geneticists have denoted as D0. Papuans, however, have DNA from at least two other Denisovan populations, D1 and D2. In fact, using several statistical approaches, the scientists discovered that the D1 and D2 Denisovan sources came from populations so far apart that they had diverged more than 283,000 years ago. Originally, we considered Denisovans as a single group, but this evidence suggests the D2 group might even require a new name. But splitting off roughly 363,000 years ago, the D2 population is most distant from the Siberian Denisovans. That renders those two populations practically as far apart from one another as they are from the Neanderthals. This begs the question, were southern Denisovans just tropical Neanderthals? Let us know in the comments if you have any ideas what this group should be called. Several ancient skulls from Australia have been suggested to have Denisovan-like morphology, but this topic is controversial. Now, scientists propose that a group of Denisovans survived in the isolated mountains of New Guinea or islands of eastern Indonesia and mated with modern humans. This is because people outside of Papua New Guinea do not have the D1 Denisovans DNA. Rather, it is found on sizable chunks of chromosome that have not been mixed over time, implying it entered the modern human genome only 15,000 to 30,000 years ago. Therefore, Denisovans must have been present in an area where they could interact with the ancestors of present-day Papuans and indigenous Australians as they migrated through the island's southern Asia. And while modern humans and these archaic humans might be classified as distinct species, they produced viable offspring. Meanwhile, DNA from Neanderthals and Denisovans has been found in ancient South Americans as well. Two Brazilian archaeological sites are exposing some of the earliest human genetic legacy of the South American continent. Researchers looking at the genomes of prehistoric South Americans have found that DNA from these two extinct human species is present. Unfortunately, we don't know if which of the three groups of Denisovans this genetic signal came from, though. This would require more research. Between Australasia, 
a term used for Australia and Papua New Guinea and nearby islands, and South America, there is a whole Pacific Ocean. So we still don't know how these ancestral genomic signals got into Central and South America without leaving any evidence in North America. Modern humans first settled South America, the last settlement of the continents, some 30,000 years ago. A sophisticated settlement process has been suggested by growing amounts of archaeological and genetic evidence. This is particularly true for South America, where unanticipated ancestral signals have generated confusing possibilities for the early migrations into several parts of the continent. Many unresolved questions remain, including whether the first explorers moved south along the Pacific coast or via some other path. Although there is archaeological evidence for a north-to-south migration during the first peopling of the South America by ancient people, exactly where these ancient people went after they arrived has remained elusive. In a new study, upending the deep demographic history of South America with some unexpected and surprising outcomes, researchers have used ancient DNA from two human fossils unearthed in two different archaeological sites in northeast Brazil. Among the main conclusions, scientists have found evidence of Neanderthal and Denisovan ancestry in the genomes of South American ancient people. Genetic results reveal a clear link among ancient genomes from fossils found in northeast Brazil, the Lagoa Santa site in southeast Brazil, Uruguay and Panama. These links most likely came from migratory waves involving the first indigenous people of South America close to the Pacific coast. Australasian genetic signals also were found in an ancient fossilized genome from Panama. What's more, although having similar ages, the ancient genomes from Brazil, Uruguay and Panama are separated thousands of kilometers from one another. Researchers found more Denisovan than Neanderthal ancestry in ancient Uruguay and Panama people, adding still another level of complexity to the already complicated picture. It's really amazing that the Denisovan heritage reached all the way to South America. The mixture must have happened some 40,000 years ago in East Asia, a very long time ago. The fact that the Denisovan lineage persisted and its genetic signal made it into an ancient individual from Uruguay that is only 1,500 years old suggests that this was a major admixture event between a population of modern humans and Denisovans. Ancient episodes of interbreeding between anatomically modern humans and Neanderthal and Denisovans would help to explain the presence of these ancestries in ancient Native American genomes. These events would have occurred millennia before the first human groups arrived in North America via Beringia. The discovery is ancient tools in eastern Siberia recently dated to 400,000 years ago suggests the Denisovans had the ability to survive in a sub-Arctic environment and cross Beringia. Nonetheless, the lack of evidence of the Australasian signal in prehistoric North American bones points to ancient Australasians perhaps arriving in South America without crossing Beringia. For this reason, researchers intend to investigate more ancient Native American and Australasian genomes in future research projects. This Australasian ancestry in the South America is also confusing, since this has been documented for isolated samples extensively separated by distance and time, and does not show any clear trend. Although there is no evidence ancient Austronesians made it to the South America, such ancestry may have spread with Austronesian migrations across the Pacific. Indeed, Austronesians were capable seafarers who crossed the seas of Southeast Asia tens of thousands of years ago to Australia. This reveals that our ancestors in this region of the planet seem to have interbred with at least two different groups of Denisovans, one group about 50,000 years ago, as previously discovered, and a second group far more recently. People living on the mainland of Papua New Guinea have far more genes from the second interbreeding than those living on surrounding islands, indicating the mixing occurred with Papuan mainlanders following the departure of their ancestors. In fact, a similar Denisovan genetic mystery exists in island Southeast Asia. 
In yet another shocking hypothesis, a study suggests one of these Denisovan groups may have survived and come across modern humans as recently as 15,000 to 30,000 years ago, tens of thousands of years later than scientists had believed they went extinct. Genetic data indicated modern humans interbred at least twice, in Asia and Australasia, and that the genomes of individuals from Papua New Guinea may be up to 5% Denisovan. Thus, Denisovans might have crossed paths with contemporary humans on Indonesian islands or in mountainous New Guinea. As discussed, the Denisovans from the D2 group, which split off around 363,000 years ago from the Siberian Denisovans, may have mixed with the first Homo sapiens in Southeast Asia. In another interesting twist, researchers discovered that the Denisovan DNA in Papuans came from male Denisovans, whereas most Neanderthal DNA comes from female Neanderthals. This hints at the nature of these relationships, suggesting a different social structure for Denisovans and Neanderthals. Furthermore, archaeological data points to a modern human migration 30,000 years ago to the islands near Papuan. The scientists deduced, however, that it was much later, roughly 15,000 years ago, that mating occurred by comparing the genomes of Papuan mainlanders and islanders. This suggests the Denisovans of this remote place were rather reclusive. Whatever happened on New Guinea, it appears Denisovans were a far-flung, diverse population interacting with modern humans from Siberia to the tropics. And with that statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other videos. Thank you and take care.